Hi everyone, this is Carolyn. Um, we're just one minute in and I'm just gonna wait a couple of minutes uh, for some people to file in as we get started, before we get started. So feel free to message us in the chat box, tell us who you are, where you're from as more people file in. All right, we are three minutes in, and I am gonna go ahead and get started. Hi, Adele, thanks for saying hi. Um, nice to see you here today. I hope you're, hope you're ready to learn. <laughs> so um, my name is Carolyn, and um, I've been in content and SEO for about 10 years now. And this past year, I actually branched out and I opened my own business to help companies achieve better visibility online really uh, focusing on search engine optimization and content. And my company is actually called Search Hermit because my goal is to help businesses come out of their shells and get found online. And this content matrix actually really started when I worked at a company called CallRail. And back then there, was, uh, there were separate SEO and content teams. And we oftentimes experienced a small bit of tension between the content and SEO teams because the content team felt SEO was always like cramping their creative style and the SEO team felt like the content team um, didn't care as much about the key metrics that really mattered to SEO. So the basis of this content matrix was really born out of those discussions that came from um, resolving those issues. And I've been tweaking it and adding on to it ever since then. And so the idea is really threefold. We want to use this content matrix to drive more traffic to your website. Uh, we want to move that traffic further along in your content funnel through micro conversions to get people to take the ultimate conversion, which is to buy your product or service. And we want to do all this, number three, by doing really what marketers should have been doing since the inception of inbound marketing, which is to serve the needs of our users and clients. So let's Let's jump right in. Um, I was tweaking this um, content matrix after Search Engine Journal asked me to write an article about topic clusters. And I really think that topic clusters can be great for SEO. But overall, I think that as marketers, um, the execution or our execution of the model was really more focused on us than it was on our clients. So. Topic clusters are essentially a group of articles that are all linked together um, under one umbrella page that kind of serves as the hub for that general topic. And because we're providing lots of internal links um, in the topic cluster model, it really helps search engines figure out what your site is about, what your area of expertise is, really what's going on. And it can help spread some of the link equity that your top pages are getting to sort of newer pages or pages that maybe take more than a few clicks to get to from your home page. So it's, it's not all bad. <laughs> um, and 
the pillar page is more of like a generalized overview topic. For example, um, if I were creating a topic cluster, I may create a general hub page around social media marketing. And that means that the more in-depth pages that fall under that umbrella will all link up to that pillar page and the pillar page will link down to them vice versa. So under our social media marketing page, we may have sub pages like Facebook ads, um, Instagram stories, how to use influencer marketing on social media, et cetera. So those will all roll up to our general social media marketing um, topic cluster. So this is kind of where the issues start. Uh, topic clusters work really well for search engines because they ensure things like internal linking. They make sure everything's cohesive, even on a brand level. Um, and so we just assume that it's structured well for users to also find what they need. But um, that's not always the case. <laughs> the actual process of navigating a topic cluster isn't always a great experience for real non-robot, non-search engine humans. Um, and I think part of that is because as marketers in the process of optimizing what works well for search engines, we become sort of detached from our target audiences and we end up optimizing our sites for us and people like us and what we think our target audience, audience wants. So this is what Michael Agard, um, a conversion rate optimization consultant calls the imaginary audience. Or as I like to say, whoops, we optimized <laughs> for ourselves. Um, in an article about confirmation bias in marketing, Agard talks about how it's actually really common for marketers to create content and format our websites for ourselves and what we assume our target audience really wants, uh, but that doesn't always work. Um, and we need to do better as marketers. And so I think the key to overcoming our biases and targeting our actual audiences is to really focus on what our buyers want and need. And you're saying, duh, Carolyn, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> but I think the key to that is really focusing on marketing our product and service instead of, um, or no, excuse me, we need to stop marketing our product and service or making our marketing so focused on our product and service. Um, and instead market what our product and service can do for our audiences. Hi, I think Salamanca, hi, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. <laughs> I see you in the chat. Um, so let's focus on how we can market what our product and services do for our audience. And that's about creating benefit focused copy and content. And Kinsta has a really great article all about the difference between creating feature focused copy and benefit focused copy. And um, I've sent this to SurfStat and they're going to send it out um, after the presentation, too. So you'll have a list of resources afterwards that you can go um, check out. So features are really just a slice of business functionality. Um, and each feature really does have a corresponding benefit or a set of benefits to your product or services end user. And the benefit is the value that those features will bring to your customer. And that's what we really want to start focusing on. So in this exercise, um, we're going to go through it <laughs> and talk about the features of a face. We're talking about features. We'll talk about facial features. So I think one of the easiest ways to break this down is to think I have eyes, I have a nose, I have a mouth. And if I were going to market my face, I wouldn't just say new face comes with brown eyes, a functioning nose and a mouth with teeth. Like people are going to be like, woohoo. Seems like the majority of faces. Um, instead, now that we have Thanksgiving coming, we're gonna tell our audience what those features can do for them and how their lives will be better by having them, uh, by having those features. So you can see your favorite foods being prepared by the family that you love this Thanksgiving, and you can smell how delicious your favorite Thanksgiving side or dessert is, and you can taste how magnificent the feast is that's gonna be set before you next week around this time, maybe a little bit later in the day. But it, this sounds a lot more appealing than just saying face comes with eyes, nose and mouth. We have to really build the story around what those features can provide for our audiences. And part of the template that you're going to get for um, at the end of this webinar includes sort of a template on or includes this spreadsheet on how to break it down. Um, 
it essentially tells you list out all the features or for your product or service and then figure out how they can help your client um, because that's what your client really cares about. They don't care about that the reporting is built in or that your onboarding is free or that your product is light. They want to know how that actually benefits them. So it's easy to load in the car. Um, it saves them time. They can get their, um, they have time to do their actual work instead of worrying about onboarding or stuff like that. So that's sort of like the teaser. Now we're going to dig in to the meat of the content matrix, or as I like to say, it's spreadsheet time, baby. Uh, my favorite time. <laughs> So this content matrix exists as a Google spreadsheet and um, you'll get a link to be able to create a copy for yourself and then customize it to your business. So the first step is essentially to set your content themes around your company goals. So depending on how your company um, sets up its goals, these could be monthly, they could be quarterly, they could be annually. It just really depends. Um, adjust it how you need for how your company sets its goals. But overall, I think it's really important. You need to tie your content to metrics. If you're creating content with no goal in mind, you're essentially wasting your own time and then you're wasting your users time too, because what are they supposed to do after that? Like bounce? Okay. Um, that's not what we want at all. <laughs> so you can actually, um, use tools like free tools, like Google Analytics. You can tell how many people are coming into each of these pieces of content if they're flowing to the next stage of the funnel, which is a critical part of this content matrix. And then ultimately, if they're converting from the calls to action at the very bottom of the funnel content pieces. So uh, in today's imaginary scenario, I decided uh, <laughs> I was gonna create this content matrix for uh, an accounting software company. And their Q1 2020 goal is to drive more subscriptions to their small business accounting software. So they have a bunch of different options and they want to continue to drive more subscriptions for small businesses. From there, you need to choose your target audience for each matrix. Um, in the sheet you get later, there are multiple tabs at the bottom. So if you have multiple target audiences, you can build out a content matrix for each one. Um, and this is, can be based on what your company goals are. So for my um, small business or my accounting software, um, small businesses is going to be my target audience for this one. Um, if your business has a single target audience, you may be able to think of ways to segment and subdivide them into smaller categories so you can get even more granular with the content um, needs and pain points. And really, the deeper you can dive in this, the more tailored and useful your content will be and it will speak better to your target audiences and their individual pain points, and it will help move them down the funnel. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't wanna do all that work to segment my um, target audiences, I don't wanna write pieces of content for all of their pain points, um, then you're not gonna reap the benefits of using this content matrix. Um, and you can also use it if you want to try to test out new target audiences, or maybe delve into audiences that are smaller for you right now that you potentially wanna grow. Um, so like I said, for our accounting software, we're just going to choose the target audiences of we're going to look for uh, or create content for small businesses and entrepreneurs. And we've actually gotten a ton of um, questions from people before the webinar about how do I tie in um, keywords and top of funnel traffic to this metric? Like I want to rank for keywords. I want to drive a ton of traffic. Um, and then I want people to convert. And so this next part really addresses that. And that is discovering your um, potential audiences, your target audience's pain points. And a pain point, as most marketers probably know, is um, an explicit or even an implicit issue that your target audience is experiencing. And this is really um, key to the whole content matrix. Um, to its effectiveness and its measurability. And I think the crux of the most compelling content is really figuring out what your users are searching um, when they don't know that your product or service will solve their problems. So in my notes, I wrote AKA mind reading and magic, but it's not really mind reading and magic. Um, we can pinpoint it down uh, further and do the research to make sure it's not just magic and pulling out of nowhere. So according to WordStream, there are four main types of pain points. And these are the ones we're going to focus on for the content matrix. The first one is 
uh, financial pain point. It doesn't make whatever is happening in um, your user's life doesn't make financial sense for them. Uh, something doesn't save as much time as they need, or even worse, it wastes time for your potential target audience or user. They have ineffective procedures. They don't get things done well. Um, and it's uh, a pain point, a big deal for them in their business, or they're in this stage of major change, uh, or they need, they're, they need support in some way for their business. And I think paying attention to these pain points is really how you write for the buyer persona while still trying to rank for the keywords and phrases. Because if you think about it, if you have an issue, you search your problems and questions surrounding that issue. And when you figure out what your customers, your potential customers pain points are, um, that's what they will be searching. That's the language they will be using to search. So how do you figure these out? There are three main ways. The first one is to just talk to people. And I think this is sometimes the hardest for marketers, but it really doesn't have to be. You can um, ask your existing customers about their journey, why they chose you, um, ask them what potentially could have stopped them from choosing your product or service and how they overcame that and um, decided to choose your product. And you can also talk to prospects who didn't convert. So maybe they were interested, they contacted you and then ultimately, ultimately didn't buy your product or service. Ask them why, what, what competitor they went with, why they went with that competitor. And in all of these conversations, listen to the language that your the people you're talking to are using. Write down the words and the phrases, how they refer to your product, because the way they're speaking about your product or service is how they're going to search for something related to your product or service. When they describe the problem they had and why they were initially searching for you, write down how they describe that problem so you can use that language in your content moving forward. And then um, my friend Sarah Gerbach, who works for Seer Interactive, reminded me um, in a great uh, presentation she gave to always offer your people you're speaking to something for their time, even if it's something small like an Amazon gift card or you know a coffee gift card. Um, make sure to offer something for the time of them providing that feedback to you. And if talking to your existing clients or your uh, clients who didn't convert is too time consuming or cost restrictive, the next thing I recommend is to try to survey people. Um, you can always try to do it with a form. It doesn't necessarily require a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, time or a ton of money. Uh, you could pay for survey distribution if you have the ability, or you could just send it to your existing email list, post it on your social media. I think it's just crucial, crucial to know that you'll have to sort through the data and take some of it with a grain of salt if you open it up for everyone. And lastly, if you're on a time squeeze and a tight budget, you can just Google it. I would say make sure to look for real people's experiences in places like forums, social media threads, places where actual potential users or your existing users will be writing or asking about their questions. Don't just trust articles written by your competitors because those are written by other marketers. And then we're just in that imaginary audience uh, feedback loop. Again, we're trusting what marketers think um, potential clients want. Uh, so make sure you're actually talking to your actual users. And then you just plug it in to the content matrix. Um, it's important to address each pain point at each stage of the funnel because some clients may have all of the pain points you've discovered. Some may have just one. Some may be at the top of the funnel and some may be further along in the process. And it's really crucial to cover all your bases, but also make sure you're providing a full funnel uh, for someone to go all the way from the top to the bottom and then through to purchase. And I always warn people that this means stop forcing people down the funnel. There's nothing worse than when you're trying to research a product or service that you're looking for or get general information about how to solve a problem. And the one call to action is buy now. When I'm just looking for general information, I'm I don't need to buy now. I need to get more information before I'm ready to buy. So don't be that marketer that tries to shove people down the funnel. <laughs> so I'm going to look at this from the perspective of my um, small business 
goals for my accounting software. So say I have a small business owner and she's looking ways for to automate her accounting. She doesn't really know that accounting software exists for her niche, but maybe she's like, I can't afford um, a full accountant for my current business and I need the next step down. So um, this is sort of me figuring or creating content that where she's just figuring out that maybe she has an issue and this is why you should con like continue to research um, in this specific area, continue to research for um, software solutions. So in the next stage of the funnel, she's like, oh, I didn't know that there was this um, accounting software that I could use for my small business. It's easy. Um, and I need to convince her in the second stage of the funnel, essentially that, hey, don't necessarily go with a person, try out software, like software is the next step for you. And once she's decided, okay, I'm ready to go with a software solution, at the bottom of the funnel, my content should really be focused on how my particular software solution is the best fit for her accounting needs and for all these pain points that she's experiencing along the way. And I think a lot of marketers stop there like, oh yeah, look what I did, I got the sale. But we need to continue to create content uh, that sort of helps our existing customers in some way. And whether that's, uh, for example, creating content that, um, let's see, creating content that shows her how to automate certain processes in her accounting software so she's not in there doing it manually or easy steps to uh, onboard herself to the software, that sort of thing. Essentially, I like to call this, or I think HubSpot calls it the delight phase, but I like to call it the phase where you're like, make it easy for them to refer friends to you or to leave you a review. You wanna create content for your existing customers that makes them happy to share it with their friends and say, this is the solution I use, you should use it too. All right, we've done a lot of prep work. Let's get to the matrix now. <laughs> so in the matrix, you'll put this funnel focus solution into the audience's pain points um, and then figure out your solution in the corresponding solution cell. So to dig into this one, I have my pain points for my small business audience for my uh, accounting software is they don't have time to figure out in-depth accounting. They wanna actually focus on what they wanna do for their business, not their accounting. They can't afford an expensive accountant and they need they just need basic accounting advice for their small business. And so I've created this list of solutions that as the expert, the accounting software expert here at the top of top of the funnel and the awareness stage, um, these are the solutions I can provide. So what would be a solution to not being able to afford an expensive accountant? Um, the solution is cheap ways to figure out your small business accounting issues. And that is what I create my content around. So. Um, I create content around the solutions that I've devised for my target audience's pain points. So you can see here, uh, she doesn't have time for in-depth accounting, so I'm gonna give her tips to streamline the process, and my content asset is 35 small business accounting hacks to save time. I know people hate the hacks thing, but I'm trying to get people to convert here, to click. And so you can see how each pain point is color-coded, I think of a solution for that pain point, and then I create a content asset around it. Around it. Um, and then the next, the next part of it is doing that for every stage of the funnel. So here I have the awareness stage. From there, I'll do the same thing for these um, same existing pain points. We're, we're gonna stick with the same four pain points in every single stage of the funnel. Um, so I create solutions and contents content for the awareness phase, the consideration phase, the um, buying phase, and then the, the post-sale phase. And once you have those filled out for every single um, stage of the funnel per pain point, that's when you create your calls to action specifically to move people down the funnel um, to the next corresponding piece of content that addresses their pain point. So this is where I um, was saying before, don't jump from zero to 100. Don't say, all right, you finished our article in the awareness phase, now go to the buy phase. Uh, people wanna know what's next for them. So you can see here in the consideration phase, they don't. she doesn't have time for in-depth accounting. Um, and I figured out a way that I can um, quantify that the top small business owners save 500 hours a year when they use accounting software. So they're not doing it manually, they're not going to their accountant's office and they can save this much time. I've created a content asset around that and then you can see how I've tied the call to action in my awareness phase to the actual 
content in the next phase of the funnel. So back to my awareness content, at the end I'll say, hey, here are small business accounting hacks to save time. At the very end, I'll say, do you want to save 500 hours a year? And she'll be like, what? Yeah, I want to, I, these 35 small business hacks have helped me save this much time, but I would love to learn how to save 500 hours a year. Here's how top SMBs do it. And I'll move her to that next stage of the funnel. So you do this for every stage leading to the next stage. And it, like I said, it's critical not to um, try to get people to buy before they actually know what they're buying, and before they know the benefits of how your particular solution could benefit, um, could make their lives that much better. Okay, so we've filled that all out, and now we're gonna get to delighting, which is essentially uh, the part that I think some people, not neglect, but they're like, I've done my work, it's you know customer services job, or um, customer support to do the delighting afterwards, but I do think marketing has marketing has a, a job in this. And it's essentially once your reader has converted into a customer, we wanna continue to provide them the content and tools to sort of iron out the pain points that they said they had with your solution. So yeah, I bought your software, now what do I do? Um, I need to make sure that I am, um, Continuing to delight them. So how to automate your top bookkeeping processes with money books. That's the software I name I created um, So oh, my headers went away on this, but this um, Let's see Can you see my mouse? Okay, cool um, This is the pain point. So her pain point throughout the whole process is that she didn't have time for in-depth accounting um, The solution was ways to make in-depth accounting easy for small business owners with my software and then my content asset would be how to automate your top bookkeeping process with money books so this i'm showing her how to continually be satisfied with the um product and service that we're providing and then my call to action action just happens to be oops my call to action just happens to be hey we'd love a review on google g2 crowd we'd love a referral to your friend um, so that's how you can continually involve your marketing in that post-sale phase of the funnel. Um, so really, I think a lot of times marketers believe that there's only one conversion and that's the main conversion from uh, being a prospect to a customer. But there are micro conversions along the way um, between the top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel, the bottom of the funnel, and people can come in at different parts where depending on where they are in their research journey but we just want to make sure we're leading them to the next phase and not automatically swiping them down at the bottom and um that way we're we're always converting because we're always doing these little micro conversions um along the way oops psych you almost got the url maybe if you screenshotted it no i'll show it to you in a second but okay you've created your matrix and now what? Now you have to actually create the content around the matrix. And I just have some tips about this, making sure that you're focusing on the user and so that when you drive in traffic initially, you're driving in good qualified traffic and not just traffic that's not gonna convert in any way. So make sure when you're creating content that you're being thoughtful and thorough, create exhaustive pieces of content that potentially answer every single question someone could have about what you're, um, what you're writing about make sure going back to the topic cluster model it was beneficial so make sure you're creating links to your existing content um sort of staying along the i don't think the topic cluster model is bad we just want to make sure we're creating it in a way that also focuses on users so make sure you're interlinking um, to your existing content and then make sure to reference data and outside sources you don't want people to think that you're the only one who thinks this um, that you're the only one who um, believes these sort of things so uh, or believes about XYZ about your product or service. So make sure that you're quoting outside sources, you're referencing data. Obviously, it doesn't have to be competitors, but it's important to uh, support what you're saying with citations, I believe. And then, like I said, and I've been hammering on this whole time, make sure you're mindful of what funnel stage you're writing for so you're not trying to cram people down the funnel before they're ready to buy. And then write content that actually serves your user's needs, not your idea of their needs. And this will serve you better in search engine results and in conversions. Because like I said, people search the their problems 
they don't necessarily search for the solution unless they're further down in the funnel. So it's important to have content at every stage of the funnel so you can grab people in, drive more traffic, no matter what people are searching, um, and actually help them solve their problems. And this ties into sort of the last point, which is be selfless in the giving away of ideas. And I think when you're writing content, um, I think a lot of marketers tend to believe, oh, I need to gate this. Um, if people want this next step, they need to give me their email address or something. But I believe, even as a marketer and a consumer, that one of the best ways um, to help people is to be selfless in giving away your ideas and your knowledge. Because when people need a solution that is related to your area of expertise, they're going to come to you because they know that you're the thought leader in that area. You've helped them so far along. Um, along the way in their journey and they trust you because you've helped them so far and and given them the information they needed to succeed up to the point where they need your product or service so now you can have the url this is the url to the um, content matrix you can go in there is an image with an instruction on how to make a copy so you just go make a copy and then get to um, creating content and converting and uh, we I think that uh, Serpstat said that if you have any questions, feel free to send them. And then when we post this webinar at the very end, uh, or I think at the, I think they're going to post it on like YouTube or something like that. We're going to answer any questions that come in um, in the description of the YouTube box. And if you have any other questions along the way, feel free to email me. My name is Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N at searchhermit.com. And I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for joining me in and like i said if you have any questions email me or send them in the chat and we'll answer them later thanks